So as uh, as AJ mentioned, or as we talked about, he he stayed on for the two years. So so initially in in 2021, I was supposed to be handing the gavel to to Keith Waugh and and listening to his remarks. But as it happens, I, uh, I, I the, the guy from Tallahassee, I, I get to speak to one of our most well attended uh, conferences so far or conventions so far, over 900 registered. So um, it's great for us all to be back together. It's great seeing everybody in person. Um, it's been a long time, missed, missed last year. So what I want to do tonight is, is, is three things. First, we got a lot of people to thank, um, acknowledgements, people that, that make this association go every year. Uh, second, I want to introduce you to my family and, and tell you a little bit about our story up in Tallahassee. And then uh, third, we'll, we'll talk just a little bit about FTBA. But um, first, I would like to recognize our board of directors, our district committee men, if you would all stand and be recognized. Our past chairman, would you all please stand and be recognized. We have a uh, past president in the house tonight. Uh, Mr. Bob Burleson and his wife Beverly are here tonight. So would you please stand and be recognized. Our officers and executive committee, great group. We have um, incoming chairman Keith Wall from Loware Construction, secretary treasurer Scott Pittman from Ajax Paving, Joey Anderson from Anderson Columbia, Kevin Hicks from Gator Grading and Paving, and, and of course, AJ is our outgoing chairman. So would you all please stand and be recognized. <laughs> so uh, one person I can't fail to, uh, to mention is after eight years on executive committee, he had two years as the chairman as we transitioned between Bob and Anath and then uh, he had two years due to COVID as our outgoing chairman. So after eight years, uh, Bob Schaefer is finally getting off of the executive committee. So, uh, Bob, thank you for your leadership, your dedication. So just a quick story about Bob. Over the last uh, four years during his chairman and outgoing chairman, Bob kind of served as the he was the unofficial leader of our scholarship committee interview process. So the way that works is, is it happens down in Tampa. All the shortlisted applicants are, are come to one room. The committee is set up in one table. Bob's sitting in the middle. He meets them. So for those that don't know, Bob's, Bob's an imposing presence to a, to a high school senior and um, deep voice. So, so Bob greets them and he says, I'm Bob Schaefer, I have one question that you've got to get right today, and what does FTBA stand for? So 95% of them nail it. I think there's even like a logo in the room that, that they could look at, but there's two or three that don't, and it is a terribly awkward silence because Bob's just staring at them. They're, they're just searching for, for something, and I think we got like a Florida Transport and Boating Association. We got a... <laughs> Uh, Florida Builder Society, which I'm not sure how that works with the S in there, but um, they, uh, I say all that if you, if you have somebody going in front of the uh, scholarship committee, any, any of your kids, please, please make sure they know what that stands for. <laughs> While we're talking about scholarships, this year's group, absolutely incredible. Hopefully you made it to the breakfast yesterday and you were able to, to see firsthand how, how impressive they were. We awarded 31 scholarships, um, not just for students going into transportation. If you were at the breakfast, you saw that, you know, they're going to whatever industry they want, and this association commits to, to, to funding their, their education, and um, they're eligible as long as they have a parent who works for an FTBA member company, so please encourage people to apply. Vocational schools, Ivy League schools, West Point, junior college, they all, all were going to, to various places, so... Uh, while we mention scholarships, you can't, you can't mention FTBA scholarships without talking about Ms. Bonnie. She is so dedicated, so passionate, and we thank you for that. So. Sponsors and exhibitors, 
we could not put this event on without you. You look around the room, you look around the convention. Um, as, as you've been here this week, they're everywhere, and, and, and you're extremely important to us. So, so thank you for, for all that you do. FDOT, uh, they could not be here tonight, but they were with us this afternoon. They were with us all week. Um, today they received some, some commentary at the roundtable as, as to how they can improve. Uh, it was well received. They, um, there's a good department there working with us. Um, if, you, if you think about what they did during COVID, as, as we as an association didn't really know what we were getting into, how we were going to run our businesses, and, and they were able to, you know, they, that we accelerated uh, projects. They, they classified us as essential workers, eased lane closure restrictions. The list goes on. So, so I do think, even though they're not here, I, I think that they are the department. They're, they're some of our biggest client, and, uh, and they are need to be recognized, so, so we do thank them for that. Our uh, advocacy partners, another group hugely instrumental in the success of our industry. Um, Brad Burleson with Ballard Partners, he has been the quarterback for us at the Capitol for the last eight years. He's been the, uh, the quarterback of some extremely big wins for us, and and then we have uh, Jim Boxhold with Capital City Consulting. He's a former DOT secretary, helps us out, and, and we depend so heavily on their success. They, they're tasked with guarding the Transportation Trust Fund, which is the backbone of our industry. We give them a lot of other legislative priorities, that, and, and our industry is, is, is heavily dependent on them. So, so Brad, Jim, obviously at NATH, we, we thank all you all for, for everything that you do. I want to piggyback on AJ and, and Anath and, and, and just thank Cynthia, Stacy, Heather. You guys do so much, so, so thank you from, from all of us. You're a well-oiled machine, and uh, you're extremely efficient, and, and we don't know all that you do, so, so thank you for all that. <laughs> Anath, his wife, Sunita, and, and his daughter, Risha, are here. I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed developing a relationship with Nath, with Anath. He knows the issues backwards and forwards. He's extremely accessible to, my, to our membership. We're very, very fortunate to have him. Anath, thank you for all that you do. Risha, Sunita, thank you for being here and, and, and allowing us to, to have Anath. So, Anath, thank you. So the Ritz-Carlton staff, they're incredible. They've, uh, they've hosted us here all week, and, and we're extremely uh, thankful for all they've done. They, they work in an industry where you rarely hear when things are good. Um, you always hear when they're bad. I have a little experience in this, because when, when I was a freshman, uh, after my freshman year in college, I went, to, I went to play in a summer league. I played summer baseball, or I played college baseball, and they, they send you to go play in a summer league. So. When I got there, the summer league had given us some jobs, and so I was assigned, or the job that I had was at, was given to me, was at the Summerfield Suites, which is in Dulles, right outside the Dullis Airport. So I show up first day, and uh, thinking I'm going to be cleaning the pool or blowing the parking lot or something. And so I get there, they tell me they're short in the housekeeping department, and so I uh, said, okay, I need a job, so I. I I tr they told me that I would be training, so I trained with a lovely lady, and she, she spoke no English. I spoke no Spanish. We went through the, uh, she, she taught me how to, you know, fold the toilet paper just right and, and get, the, uh, get the towels. And um, so went on and, and, and spent the rest of my summer knocking and, and saying, you know, housekeeping. And so I went through that. It was, uh, it was, th it was a tough three months. I, I say all that to say that the hospitality industry is an extremely underappreciated job. So when you're leaving tomorrow, please, please go out of your way to thank the staff here. They've, they've done a lot. <laughs> so that was, uh, there's a lot of people to thank. I know I didn't get to everybody, but I um, want to introduce you to my family who are, who are here tonight and tell you a little bit about our company. Uh, my brother Emery is here. He's my older brother. He, uh, he, he used to live in Tallahassee, no longer lives there. He, his career path took him him out of town. He's, he's an executive with Hancock Whitney Bank and 
He was actually the chairman of the Florida Bankers Association in, in 2018, so I'm glad he's here. Very, very happy to have him. My dad, Emory Sr., and uh, my stepmom, Kathy, they are here tonight. They, um, they found, founded our company and, and, and put in the blood, sweat, and tears for, for me to be standing up here tonight, so that's, that's very special for me. And, and then uh, my world, we have a son and a daughter. My son is not here tonight. He is, uh, he's nine and he has, he has developmental disabilities, but uh, he is our, you know, he brings joy to us every day. We're, we're sad that he couldn't be with us. This, this event would be a little much for him, but, but he brings joy to our life. And, and so we, uh, we certainly miss him tonight. My daughter, Reagan, she's 12. She's going on 25. She's, uh, she's involved in everything. She's, uh, she's a straight A student. And she's a, she's a great big sister, and Brittany and I are blessed. And my wife, Brittany, she's here as well. She, uh, we've been married 13 years, and, and she's a supporter. She sacrifices. She's a creator. She, she does everything. She's a mom, and she's a mom of a special needs child, which, which only the mom of a special needs child knows what that means. So, um, so Reagan, Marshall, and I are, are extremely blessed to have her. So our... Uh, So a little bit about our company, uh, we, we work in the Tallahassee area, Leon County, surrounding counties, um, been fortunate enough to stay in our backyard there for, for the last 40 years. And my dad started the company in 82. He was, he was raised in South Georgia and, and he was a farming, uh, he, he was born into a farming family and, and that's what they did. And, and so when my dad and his brother started getting older um, to where my dad was, was working age, the, the brother started growing apart and, and doing other things, pursuing other interests. And so that was when dad started dabbling in the land clearing business and, and that led him to Tallahassee where there was more work and started working in the site work business a little bit, working for different people. And, and then in 82, he, he decided to go out on his own and started knocking, out, knocking on doors, had a few people that believed in him that, that came with him and, and picking up jobs here and there. He didn't really had nothing but but a rubber tired backhoe and, and a pickup truck and, and, and that was where he started from. He earned a reputation for doing what he said he was going to do. Earned the trust of a few developers in Tallahassee and, and so um, things, things got better. Started, business started growing a little bit. And, but um, you know, you look back at that decision, three kids at home at the time and, 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 and that's, a, that's a tough decision to make and, and, and really go but, but it's like a lot of a lot of families here in this room, or a lot of businesses and families in this room as to how they got their start. Um, you know, you had a leader that, that really went out and, and wouldn't take no for an answer and, and started, you know, just fighting and, and, and finally started to gain a little bit of traction. So that's not to say he didn't, uh, didn't recognize the struggles that were there. Certainly, you know, I can remember seven, eight years old hearing the conversations at the dinner table about concerns about payroll that Friday. I mean, that, that was just, that was the way it was. That was where, what it was when, when you got started. So shortly after my dad started in 82, my cousin William joined our company and, and he was the general manager for us up until a few years ago. And as time progressed, business grew. And through high school, we did our, we, my brother and I, we worked in the company, did what you do in family businesses. You fill in the holes, you do, uh, you do what you gotta do. And um, so, so we, we went through that and, and started building most of the residential subdivisions in Tallahassee. And, and then, uh, so I, I got to about college age and I was fortunate enough to go to Florida State and play baseball there and played three years. Um, met some great people. One of my teammates is here. We, we played together for, for three years and we've now worked together for 20. So Jeremy Morris, he's here. So he's special, special to have. And, but after my junior year in college, I, the handwriting was kind of on the wall that I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to make a living doing that. And so my, uh, that coincided with, with our company getting our first DOT project, hands down, uh, biggest one we'd ever had to tackle. If you know, Tallahassee, north side of Tallahassee, taking a two lane existing road, five miles worth to a, to a six lane. And, 
Um, so that was that was a big deal. So I decided I, I gave up ball and, and and started playing or started uh, started going to work. Loaded my classes up in the morning and and then went to work. But it was a uh, it was a good decision. It was it was the best one I ever made. I've been working in the business ever since then, with the exception of a couple years. Spent the years going up through the ranks, and 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 that was just been the way we've done it. Um, had a had a great time and and was able to learn from my dad and cousin for 20 years and and up until recently five years five six years ago my dad and my cousin decided they they were ready to go do something else and have a little bit of fun so so it's been it's it's been great being able to take the reins and I'm proud to be able to uh, to lead our company and carry on the dream that the dad had 40 years ago so um, that's kind of our story we um, like I say, we're we're just right there in Tallahassee, and and uh, very proud to to be up there. So a little bit about FTBA, as most of you figured out by now, our company, in comparison to many of the ones in the room, it is not near as as big as as others. That's what's great about the association. Our membership's made up of of companies of all strengths and sizes. Does not matter, big, small, medium, prime, subs, vendors, dealers, doesn't matter. My opinion, that's our one of our greatest strengths. So we're made up all these companies with, with different strengths and sizes. And we're at the end of the day, you listen to the round table today, and, and we're all faced with, with the similar with very similar issues at their core. Um, you, you think about large contractors in Dade County are, are faced with the same issues that the con the subcontractor in Freeport is. That that that's why we're here. Um, you know, obviously workforce development's at the top of our priority list these days. It's been an issue that, that's at the top of really every chairman's list since I've been here, and, and it probably will be on the 2050 chairman's list. Um, we work tirelessly to promote our industry and the opportunities that exist in this industry, which I believe are some of the best that have ever been. There are endless opportunities within our industry. So. It's obviously an issue that's not going to be solved tonight, but and it's not, it, it's not, it's going to take continued effort as a group for us to to continue evolving and finding a way to to communicate our message, because we do need to communicate that there are really great opportunities in our industry. Material and labor price increases. We we talked about those today. Um, there, we're, that's going to be a hurdle we have. What we're seeing in the marketplace right now will impact our work program. The pot of money that, that maybe funded 10 jobs, now may, maybe only funds eight. So we'll have to continue to advocate for, for the work program. We'll have to continue to prove that we have the, the ability to, uh, to support an increased program, which we do and, and we will prove that as we see an increased work program. So next year will be an election year. That means that, that the campaigns are about to get cranked up and. Anath and our advocacy team do a great job of vetting the candidates that align with, with, with our values. Um, they're going to need our financial participation. We always step up to do that. We'll continue to do it. Our industry is always, we're always going to have our challenges, and, and I think we did a pretty good job of, of summarizing the current challenges that we have right now today at, at the roundtable. Um, one thing that we do as a group, we're consistent in how we approach our challenges. We have 10 different committees. They're set up to address challenges that are, that are presented to our membership. When I first joined the association, I questioned how a group of competitors could sit in a room and, and, and collaborate. And now whether that's a, whether that's a board of directors meeting or a, or a MOT committee meeting, I just question how you can compete during the day as hard as we do and, and as high stress of an environment as, as we operate in without the interference of the competitive nature of our industry getting in the way. You know, what I found was, was that the precedent was set, it was set early on, and that it's continued to be carried out, and that is when you leave the interference at the door, you get a group of extremely talented, they're our group is as smart as, uh, of a group as, as I've ever been around. We pull on each other's strengths and we work towards a, talent, a common goal. And, and by sticking to the precedent that was set in the early years, 
we end up with what we have now, which is a thriving industry and what I consider to be the strongest association in the state of Florida. So with that, I, I tell you that I'm, I'm proud to be part of, of such a great association. I'm proud to be standing here, really excited for the year to come, and, and, I, and I thank you all for the opportunity. So with that, I'm going to I'm going to hand it back over to Anath and, and thank everybody.